When you think of Peugeot, you might have the impression that their cars are boring or bland. However, I want you to forget all that and instead focus on this, the all-new Peugeot 2008. At first glance, this looks radically different from its predecessor. The biggest question is, is the new model truly an improvement or merely a design facade? If there's one word to describe the new Peugeot 2008, or by extension, the current Peugeot lineup, it would be Bo. First and foremost, this is the range-stopping GT variant. Up front, you got these very fierce-looking LEDs, which are designed to look like a cat's claws. And then this, alongside the front grille and the tall bonnet, gives the car a very muscular aesthetic. Now, actually, if you look closely behind the front grille, you will notice some foam-insulating material. Others cars have this well-hidden, but on this, it's like, you can see right there. And this fusion orange colour is actually exclusive to the 2008. Round the side, you get very nice GT badging, which lets others know that you bought the best one. And for the GT variant, you also get very nice 18-inch alloy rims. Triangular edges along the side also give the car a very chiseled and sharp outlook. The most striking feature around the back is this protruding rear bumper, and the rear LED combination lamps are actually tinted black, giving you the illusion that it extends across the entire width of the car. Now, the tailgate is not automated, and it is quite troublesome to open. And for storage space, you get 434 litres of boot space. You get a wide boot opening and a flat boot floor, which makes it easy to unload and load stuff. If you need more space, you can always fold the seat down 60-40. And if you need even more space, check this out. There's an extra compartment right underneath the boot floor. And for the GT variant, you do get a full-size space saver. The rear of the 2008 is actually pretty nice. You get comfortable legroom and this funky half-fabric, half-leather material, which is nice to the touch. And it's actually visually pleasing compared to your standard black and boring like kind of leather seats you get on other cars. Now, you don't get a centre armrest, but you do get two rear USB charging ports. And while two adults can fit here comfortably, if you add a third guy into the mix, I think it will be a bit too close for comfort. Now, the front seats do come with heating function, but honestly, in hot and humid Singapore, I personally feel that ventilated seats would have been a better option. The side bolsters are also pretty comfortable, keeping you in place while driving. And for those that like the sunshine, you do get a nice sunroof in the GT variant. You do get a 7-inch infotainment touchscreen with buttons along the side for easy navigation to stuff such as your music, your maps, or your car settings. However, while driving, right, I did notice that if you're trying to cycle through the menus fast, it can get a bit laggy, and this can cause a bit of annoyance while driving. To toggle various settings, you can use the Peugeot signature piano keys, which are quite nice to use. However, my main gripe is that the aircon controls cannot be toggled from the piano keys and you will have to use the laggy touchscreen to, in order to change the aircon speed or temperature. I wish Peugeot would have put the aircon controls on the piano keys, making it easy to use while driving. And you get this wireless charging pad, which is actually inside this compartment and it prevents your phone from sliding out while driving. And it has the most entertaining flap I've ever seen on any car. It makes you go, ta-da, here's my phone. And you get two USB ports, one Type-C for fast charging or one regular USB for when you want to plug your phone in for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. To change gears, you will have to use this interesting looking gear lever. I'll leave that up to your imagination. And it does require a bit of force to effectively change gears. So in a few months time, you probably would have a stronger left arm. Unfortunately, the glove box is ridiculously tiny. You only get half of the space available and it can be a challenge to fit stuff like your owner's manual. For comparison, here's a 600ml water bottle. You see, it can't really fit into the glove box properly. Uh. On the plus side, the centre glove box is like Pandora's box. Similar to a handbag, you can even fit this one5 liter water bottle. And it disappears. As odd as it looks, the hexagonal steering wheel is actually pretty ergonomic. And the steering wheel buttons like your volume control are actually pretty simple to use. You also get creature comforts like your cruise control, auto levering headlights, and auto wipers. I can personally vouch that the auto wipers are damn solid because we were testing this car in torrential rain, and regardless of the situation, the wipers work flawlessly. Heng ah, never gonna start in flood. In front of me, you get this futuristic holographic instrument cluster, which kind of reminds me of the special books that you get, which require 3D glasses to view properly. However, the 2008 has one fatal flaw I simply cannot comprehend. Come, let me show you. As you can see, in my natural driving position, the steering wheel actually obstructs my view from the instrument cluster. And no matter how much I adjust the steering wheel or the seat, I cannot get into a position where it's comfortable for me to view the instrument cluster. What's the point of having a very, very nice holographic instrument cluster if I can't view it properly? 
Now, your mileage may vary, but I would highly recommend testing this out in the Peugeot showroom to see if you have a comfortable fit. If not, this may be a deal breaker for you. I mean, this could be partially solved if the car had a heads-up display, but it doesn't have one. Now this peppy little compact SUV is powered by a small but very determined 1.2 litre petrol engine, producing 129 brake horsepower and 230 Nm of torque. Plus, the torque is available at just 1750 RPM, or basically as soon as you put your foot down, which is great! This means that the 2008 has healthy amounts of grunt, with enough power to wrestle your way out of a tight spot. Of course, don't expect ludicrous performance figures, and the car takes 9.1 seconds to get from 0 to 100 km per hour. But the car is nimble when it's needed. Think of it like an auntie waiting for her bus at the interchange. Normally, she goes at a very leisurely pace, but as soon as her bus arrives... And also, this car has great fuel economy. I will admit, I'm not the most frugal driver, and during testing, I average roughly around 11.5 km per litre. But with more gentle driving, you will get better fuel consumption in this car. The steering is extremely light in this car, making it very easy to maneuver, like when you're in a car park or when you're U-turning. Plus, it stiffens up when you speed up, so that when you're on the expressway, you don't really feel disconnected from the road. However, it must be said that the ride is quite harsh in this car, so you have to be gentle when going over larger humps or potholes. If not, you'll feel like you're on a mummy ride at USS. The 2008 comes with three driving modes, Eco, Normal and Sport, which can be selected by the Drive Mode Selector button here. In eco mode, the car actually limits your throttle input in order to conserve more petrol. And if you're in sport mode, or the fun mode, the car stiffens up its steering regardless of the speed you're at, allowing you to corner more confidently. The car also keeps to a lower gear, keeping the revs up, and giving you enough power when accelerating. You do get pedal shifters in this car, however, they do not turn with the steering wheel, means that you might not be able to shift mid-corner. Because of the light steering, parking in this car, absolutely no problem. Plus, you get front and rear sensors and a 180-degree field of view camera to allow you to see where you're going. However, if you're the kind that likes to leisurely park and take their time, the camera does reset after putting it into drive for like 10 seconds. So it can reset the camera and it can be very annoying when parking. So, the Peugeot 2008, where does this compact SUV stand among the rest? Honestly, I'm starting to like the Peugeot 2008. You do get a lot for your money, making it quite a compelling choice for today's hotly contested compact SUV market. And the range-stopping GT variant will set you back $130,000. Now, I only have this car for a few days, so that's no issue for me. But if I were to drive it daily, I will get frustrated trying to crane my neck around trying to see whether I exceeded the speed limit or not. And for me, that's a deal breaker. But if you're someone who doesn't have this issue, I would highly recommend giving the Peugeot 2008 a try. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Do remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again on M Review. No.
motorist. If you're in drive mode and you have the door open, you get this very annoying sound. It sounds like a school fire alarm and it lets everyone around you know that you have your door open.